there. I am the Reverend Guy Johnson, interim pastor of the North Congregational United Church of Christ. Uh, let me tell you how honored I am that you are joining us for worship today. And uh, this is a banner day for us here at Just North. Um, prayerfully, it is our last Sunday of having to record our service in advance. Um, on next Sunday, July 4th, 2021, uh, we plan on having service live here in the sanctuary. Um, we invite you to come and join us for that. Um, and again, because this is such a special day, we have a special guest preacher. Well, she's not really a guest. She's one of ours, the Reverend Joe. Joanna Samuelson is our worship leader and preacher for the day. Again, we are honored that you are here to worship with us. Therefore, let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. to worship, and please join in the responses. It has been a hard year. The losses from COVID, gun violence, and racial injustice have all piled on, pulling us down in the depths of despair. Many of us have hit rock bottom. It has been a hard year. Anger, grief, despair. I watch people suffering and being oppressed. I feel the chains of oppression. Until we are all free, none of us can be free. I pray and I pray. My life is a prayer to God. There are lives on the line here while we are waiting and watching. Just 
With God's arrival comes love. With God's arrival comes generous redemption of hope. For God is love and we are God's beloved, just as we are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, non-binary, queer, asexual, intersex, ally, cisgender, heterosexual. We are a family. Let us then worship God together.
Well, here we are. We're just one week from being back together and celebrating with a much anticipated reunion. Well, today we're gonna celebrate with gratitude all of those that have kept us connected over this time. And we're gonna celebrate pride, a big pride milestone for Just North, celebrating the 25th anniversary of becoming an open and affirming congregation. <clears throat> so there's no better place than right here outside of North Congregational United Church of Christ, Just North, where our church waits for our return next week. A church where all are welcome. Well, I found an amazing book that seems like the author visited Just North and then wrote her book. This church reminds me so much of our congregation, but it's based on the Glide Memorial Church in San Francisco. And I happen to have a couple pictures of it. There's the outside of it. And there's the inside. And the Glide Memorial Church um, started being an inclusive church way back in the 1960s. And it was Glide that really got the whole movement for open and affirming idea. They got it started. Open and affirming, that's, that's here, that's us, just north, 25 years. Well, keep an eye on the illustrations and see if they remind you of some of the folks right here at North. A Church for All by Gail Pittman, pictures by Lori Fournier. A Church for All. Sunday Waking. Day is breaking. Let's go to our Church for All. Church bells ringing, joyful noises. Choir singing, laughing voices. Candles glowing, banners flowing. Come enter our church for all. Weak and healthy, neat and messy. Poor and wealthy, plain and dressy all embracing, spirit gracing, each one at our church for all. Bodies wiggling, mommies reading. Children giggling, daddies pleading. Toddlers flailing, babies wailing. There's room at our church for all. Hands receiving, hands connecting. Hearts believing, hearts accepting. Feel the spirit, can you hear it? It's here at our church for all. Hmm, I wonder who you might be missing most at North Church. I wonder what ways you can help help us be more welcoming to new people. I wonder how you're going to celebrate our return. Well, the song for Sunday Journey's Facebook page is on the Sunday Journey's Facebook page. So pause the service, dance those wiggles out, and then maybe draw or write about something that you like best about Just North. For right now, let's put our right hand and our left hand together. Dear God, thank you for your guidance in keeping us together through worship at home. And thank you for this wonderful congregation, open and affirming, that welcomes us all. Amen. All right, see you next week.
Our first scripture reading is from 2 Samuel chapter 1. After the death of Saul, when David had returned from defeating the Amalekites, David remained two days in Ziklag. David intoned this lamentation over Saul and his son Jonathan. He ordered that the song of the bow be taught to the people of Judah. It is written in the book of Jashar. He said, your glory, O Israel, lies slain upon your high places how the mighty have fallen. Tell it not in Gath, proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon, or the daughters of the Philistines will rejoice, the daughters of the uncircumcised will exult. Your mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew or rain upon you, nor bounteous fields. For there the shield of the mighty was defiled, the shield of Saul, anointed with oil no more. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, nor the sword of Saul return empty. Saul and Jonathan, beloved and lovely, in life and in death, they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lions. O daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you with crimson in luxury, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of the battle. Jonathan lies slain upon your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. Greatly beloved were you to me. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen, and the weapons of war perished. Our second reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the, genuine, the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Savior Jesus Christ, that though rich, yet for your sakes became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter, I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundances may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. It is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The last reading is from Mark chapter five. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came and or named Jairus came and when he saw Jesus fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly my little daughter is at the point of death come and lay your hands on her so that she may be laid well and live so Jesus went with him and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years she had endured much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus, and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately, her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, 
You see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. Jesus allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's parents and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. And this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. This ends the reading. Thank you to Ione Greenlaber and Mike Page for serving as our worship leaders this morning. Would you please pray with me? Oh, holy love, may your word for us this day bring healing in our own lives, even as you use us to bring healing as the church in the world today. And, oh, dear God, may the words that I have to offer here this morning please you and honor you and glorify your holy name. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning to each and every one of you on this new day. I'm guessing that our gospel reading that I own read for us this morning may be familiar to many of you. I'm thinking that you may have heard this story before, this healing within a healing story. But as you are hearing it now today, I'm wondering how these words of scripture are falling on your ears at this time given the journey that all of us, every single one of us, has been on during these past 16 months or so. During this rather surreal experience of having to find our way through a global pandemic. Early on in this pandemic, as all of you well remember, it had been so confusing and overwhelming and even disorienting at times. The stakes were extremely high, the collective anxiety was pervasive, and the sense of urgency and panic was palpable. Plus, there was so much about this new coronavirus that was still a mystery at that time. Its ideology and epidemiology and pathology all remained largely unknown and was not yet researched and well understood by most of us. And now, even though we are in a completely different place than we were back in those early days and months of the pandemic, even now, as we seem to be approaching the other side of COVID, as our population gradually becomes vaccinated as we continue to return to many of the now modified rhythms and routines of our lives, we are different. We have been changed profoundly by COVID, by its losses and its lessons, and all that it is leaving behind with and within 
each of us. We have been changed in ways that are both significant and subtle, too, and in ways that are not yet known to us. Our lived experiences of COVID, or our COVID memory, if you will, will continue to express itself in and among all of us as time goes on and in ways that may surprise us, too. Believe it or not, all of these pandemic reflections surfaced for me while I was engaging with our scripture reading for today during these past couple of weeks. The gospel writer of Mark here combines together two healing stories into one. And quite honestly, it is somewhat challenging to follow along and is even a bit discombobulating. It's easy to get lost in this story or to lose our way in this narrative. Mark's writing style here is a stark contrast to the other gospel writers. It comes across as rushed and raw and unrefined, and it's certainly not reflective. Throughout Mark, it is apparent that the author was clearly called to share the good news with the people as soon as possible, because the second coming of Christ was believed to be imminent. And so, we certainly pick up on that sense of urgency and even panic in our reading for this morning. As soon as Jesus stepped off that boat back in Galilee now, the crowd engulfed him. There was a need that was immediate, and the situation was dire. And Jairus, a prominent leader of the synagogue in Capernaum, was in deep despair. His precious daughter, who was only a child, was deathly ill. And so he begged Jesus to go to their home with them and to heal her. And of course, Jesus, in all of his compassion, agreed to do so. But before you know it, the large crowd had pressed in on him again. And then a woman who had been hemorrhaging for 12 years because there was no cure or treatment that was available or accessible to her, was also in desperate and dire need. But she already knew what she needed. She needed and she wanted that healing presence of Jesus in her life. And so, from behind him, unbeknownst to him, she reached out and she touched his cloak. And immediately, she was healed. But the story, of course, does not end there because before you know it, word reaches Jesus that the daughter of Jairus had already died. And so then, Jesus and the crowds rushed to the home of Jairus. And there, Jesus healed the child the terminally ill child, the one who everyone else believed to have died. There we have it. Two miracles in just one story. So much tension and drama and angst and dread and despair and fear in our text for today. All of these raw and painful emotions are packed into one story that is somewhat overwhelming and disorienting. I'm curious if any of the features and feelings of our gospel reading today seem familiar to you, given our story, an historic story of living through this pandemic today. You may have heard me say before that in every story in the Bible, if you look closely, you'll find both trouble and hope. And the hope in our gospel reading for today, of course, 
is in the healing presence and the healing touch that Jesus offers to those who had been struggling to survive and living without hope. Now, with all of that background in mind then, this story, our gospel story, also speaks to the hope that is found in the healing presence that all of you have been offering and receiving in relationship with one another throughout this entire pandemic from the very beginning. It truly has been a miracle. I have witnessed the miracle of healing through the compassion and care that you have offered and received from one another during these past 16 months. In just a few moments, we will recognize our online worship team who figured out how to plan and create worship services to keep all of us connected in heart and spirit and prayer throughout this time. Every one of our boards and various committees have continued to meet faithfully by Zoom throughout this pandemic in order to do the work of the church in new ways and different ways. Laura and our digital team came up with a way to keep our congregation socially connected every single week through our virtual coffee hour. Book studies and Bible study were undeterred by the pandemic as they gathered together regularly by Zoom in order to engage in deep and even difficult conversations that we would all continue to learn and grow as we live into our call to be a healing presence in the world today. Through the ingenuity and care of our Board of Christian Education, our families with young children and youth have felt loved and cared for by our church family during this time of being apart from one another. And our caring ministry team members have been committed and intentional in reaching out to those within our church family who have been especially isolated and vulnerable during this time. Throughout this month of June, all across our nation, we recognize pride, an intentional time of lifting up and celebrating and commemorating the God-given identities and culture and activism of our LGBTQIA plus community and siblings. Many of you also may know that this month here at North marks the 25th anniversary of becoming an open and affirming congregation and a healing presence to countless individuals and families in and through our congregation and our wider community. Pastor Guy and the ONA 25 committee hope to plan an in-person celebration to take place sometime this fall. But for now, I invite you to go to our public Facebook page to watch the panel discussion that Pastor Guy facilitated with four of our original ONA committee members. It is quite remarkable, and I think you'll learn some things that you may not have known about the beginning of our ONA story. Healed through the gift of presence and touched by love. Our gospel story this morning calls us to remain open and touched and moved by God as individuals and as the church, to be a loving and healing presence in the world.
today. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us now enter into our time of prayer as we lift up the prayers of the people together. After I read each prayer request that was sent in this past week, I will speak the words, God in your mercy, and I invite you to respond by saying, hear our prayer. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. This morning, we begin our prayer time by lifting up Kaylee Robertson and Kwame and their extended family as they grieve the deep, deep loss of Kaylee's dad and Kwame's grandfather, Jim, who died this past week. May they all find comfort and strength through the love and support of their family and friends and our church family. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We recently received word from Roger Holmes that Diane Holmes' brother, Herbert Allen Foster, age 91, died this past week in Grand Junction, Colorado, following a lengthy illness. Diane and daughter Cheryl have been in Grand Junction since this past Monday to visit Allen and his younger brother, Donald, age 80, and their families. Let us surround Diane's family with all of our love and our support and care at this time. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Joy Wyant requests our prayers for her sister Amy, who will be starting dialysis soon while awaiting a kidney transplant. Joy prays that dialysis goes well and that a kidney is found soon. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Becky Mills asks for prayers for her brother-in-law's family as they deal with several health challenges. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shirley Blanton lifts up prayers for everyone who is dealing with cancer. She writes, it has always been so personal with me having worked in oncology during my career, maybe even more so now. Shirley also asks for our continued prayers for her son as he, rece excuse me, as he recovers from his surgery. His surgery went well, according to the doctor. Shirley also thanks us for all of our prayers. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Marilyn Orlos asks that we would continue to pray for her brother-in-law, Steve, and her sister, Judy. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ed Snively offers up prayers for Vicki and Karen and their family following the passing of their father. Ed also asks for prayers for comfort for Annabelle and Ed asks for prayers for joy for Cheryl and Diane and their family. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faith Limley lifts up prayers for all friends and family members in the Florida building collapse. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ruthann Farthing asks God to help all of us to expand voting rights and to stop voter suppression in the USA. Ruthann also offers up prayers that people who are transgender will feel the support of their allies. And she offers up prayers of thanksgiving for times of connection. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ellen Baumgartner, shares this prayer with us this morning. Creator, please waken the hearts and minds of all people, especially world leaders and CEOs of businesses, to the extreme crisis of global warming so that they will take the very strong actions needed to save our precious home, Mother Earth. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
and Joanne Ney shares this prayer with us today. May all the leaders and planners and delegates and the whole United Church of Christ prepare our hearts for General Synod to take place July 11th through 18th, that we might be rooted in God's love. Joanne also shares this prayer. Prayers of thanksgiving, O God, for all who shared their gifts to provide online worship for 16 months, whose commitment kept us a worshiping congregation, reaching new people. And as we prepare to gather again in person for worship on July 4th, be with us and guide all of our steps. Even as we celebrate together, may we hold in our hearts those whose health is still vulnerable, whether children or elders, and those who are not yet ready, may all that we say and do be signs of your love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This morning for our pastoral prayer, I'd like to share a prayer that was written a couple of years ago by Reverend Marin Tirabasi. She is an author and a poet, and uh, she has created several worship resources. And she wrote this prayer poem in response to her experience at a pride parade in her own community. After I read this prayer, I invite you to join me in the Lord's Prayer, and I invite you, of course, to use whatever rendering is most meaningful to you. Let us continue in a prayerful spirit. O oh God, who gives pride to those who have been discounted, raising up a rainbow of people at the pride parade, I give thanks for my church. We came dressed as the orange for today's rainbow and for the teenagers wrapped in flags with so many stripes and glitter on their faces, for the three buses full of folks from an assisted living community celebrating what they could not in their days of youth. For babies in strollers, whose parents want them to grow to be more who they are and compassionate to all. I give thanks for James Baldwin and Marsha P. Johnson, for Harvey Milk and Audrey Lord, for Sylvia Rivera and George Takei, and for Bayard Rustin, and so many more. I give thanks for the heroes of Stonewall, now 52 years ago, and I weep for every year's trans martyrs. May they never be forgotten. O oh God, the leftist marching band is coming by now, and you are dancing with us in the street. And now, God of all rainbows and pride celebrations, we remember the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Mother and Father God, who art in heaven and within, hallowed be thy many names. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we join in this time of transition and gratitude, let us join responsively with the phrase, we give you thanks, O God. We express our gratitude for those who have made the online worship services possible for our church family and the wider worshiping community. We give you thanks, O God. We are grateful for the courage and determination of those who stepped forward and shared their gifts during a time of uncertainty and high anxiety. We give you thanks, O oh God. 
We are grateful for the patience and persistence of those who were able to work through technical difficulties and challenges. We give you thanks, O oh God. We are grateful for the faith and encouragement of our congregation in its ongoing support of the mission and ministries of Just North UCC. We give you thanks, O oh God. Would you all please pray with me? O oh God who grounds us, you are with us in every transition and change. As we step into this next chapter of our life together, we do so with anticipation, enthusiasm, and some healthy anxiety, too. We are anchored in you through your deep compassion and care for us, as well as your steadying presence in our lives. We thank you for the faith, gifts, and commitment of all of those who are part of our unfolding journey as a congregation. We honor the experiences that have brought us to this moment and have shaped us who we are as Just North UCC. Be with us today as we live into who you are calling us to be tomorrow. We ask this in your holy name, amen. of new dimensions in the face of changing ways who will lead the pilgrim peoples wandering in their separate ways out of rainbow fiery pillar leading where the eagles soar we your people journey 
grant that we, your global village, might envision wider dreams. God of rainbow, fiery pillar, leading where the eagles soar, we, your people, ours a journey, now and ever, now and ever, now and ever more. We are man and we are woman, all persuasions, old and young, each a gift in your creation, each a love song to of dire predictions cause us to withdraw in pain. May your blazing phoenix spirit resurrect the church again. Out of rainbow fiery pillar leading where the eagles soar, we Good morning. As you know, this is the last week before we meet again for in-person worship. This year has been a year and there have been challenges, but we are still here. And next Sunday, we'll mark a milestone on our journey. We're excited that we will be seeing many of you in person, understanding that the experience will look and feel different. There have been, there has been much thoughtful deliberation put into the plan for reopening with input from a variety of persons um, and many sources. We have appreciated all of your support and patience as we have worked to reach a balance between safety concerns and eagerness to be together. Watch for the latest update of the reopening plan, which is a work in progress. Your continued patience and understanding are appreciated as we go forward on this leg of our journey. Remember to be gentle with yourself and be of good heart. Joanne Ney has organized a series of small group meetings in which we are invited to meet outside in groups of eight to listen, share, and reflect on the past year and a half and what it has meant for us. Please contact Joanne if you have questions or would like additional information. And Friday Bible study takes place with Pastor Guy on Fridays from 1030 to noon. Now, Let's turn to our call to offering. Joanne Ney and the Stewardship Board will continue to update the 2021 Summer Giving Tree, which will let you see the growth in our financial giving to North Church through June, July, and August. Remember that your giving, whether pledged or unpledged, large or small, all makes a difference and help support our various ministries. You may give by sending a check to the church, using the donate button on our Just North website, scheduling payments, or using Zelle through our bank. As always, 
please hear our gratitude for continuing your support for our church and ministries. Now, please join me in our prayer of dedication. For gifts given and received, O oh God, we offer thanks and praise. May we share our abundance with all who have need. May we share our hope in like measure. Amen. Now, relax your shoulders and give yourself a hug. Then let's open our hearts to share our peace with each other, as is our weekly custom. Start by placing both hands over our hearts and slowly remove them with arms outstretched and hands open to give and receive peace. This act of giving and receiving peace helps us to open our hearts and experience together what we share as a church family. Please know and remember that we are connected in heart and spirit. Peace be with you this morning, my North Church family and friends. Hey, y'all, listen. We are having our opening back to church on July 4th, and I'm calling that BYOB Sunday. Now, I know some of you just clutched a pearl. This is what it needs. Bring your own bulletin, bring your own beverage, bring your own body, and bring your own Bible. Uh, bring your own bulletin. So in an effort to help us cut down on paper that we use here in the church office, if you can, print out your own bulletin and bring it with you. Or bring your device, your tablet, your iPad, your phone, and look at the bulletin there. That helps us cut down on the amount of paper that we have to pass out. There will be a limited number of bulletins available, but BYOB. Bring your own beverage. It's July 4th. It's going to probably be a little hot. So bring your own bottled water, coffee, whatever you decide to bring, lemonade, uh, Diet Coke, whatever you bring, uh, make sure you bring your own beverage and whatever uh, trash you create from that, take it with you when you leave. Uh, bring your own Bible, B-Y-O-B. Um, we will not have Bibles in the pews, so again, if you want to bring a Bible with you, please do, or like with your bulletin, pull it up on your phone. That way, we don't have to, you know, have as many things in the pews as we normally would. That's it. So, BYOB Sunday is going to start on July 4th, and we will do that through the remainder of the summer, and we will re-examine this right before Labor Day. I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Have a great day on purpose, but more importantly, have a great day on purpose. I'll see you soon. Go out into the world with no debt but love, for love will not harm and will do no wrong to your neighbor. Go out into the world with no law but love, and you will keep God's commandments of love and honor. Go out into the world with no prayer but love, and God will be with you, and Christ will be in you, and the Spirit will surround you. Go in peace, seek peace, be at peace. Amen. <laughs>